Hello everyone, welcome to the After Chat. We are down here at the Afters Alley Annex. Chickies and Pete's has welcomed us. Chickies and Pete's, South Philadelphia, Packer Avenue. Great place to eat, great place to socialize. You gotta come on down. And maybe you'll be here one night when uh, Afters Alley is taking place. And this is our first edition. And I wanted to, tr before I invited anyone to Afters Alley down here at Chickies and Pete's, I wanted to make sure, absolutely sure, that what I've heard about their crab fries is correct. So let me all right, all right. sample yes, their crab fries. Like said, paper, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh my Mind god! Mind if I cut in? The blue meanie? Yes! Oh my goodness, I didn't know you were a crab fry guy. Well, I've been trying to build a better meanie by losing some weight, but when, when in Rome, when in Chicken and Pete's, you yeah. have to have the crab fries. Yeah, and you've been a uh, Chicken and Peters for how many years now? Uh, as as long as you know, Chicken and Pete's been in Philly. I've been. I love this establishment. Great atmosphere. Great people. Great staff. Yeah. And they were uh, gracious enough to have us here to do an after's alley. Yeah, I know. They they said what Bob Morrison, the manager here, said. You know, this could be your annex here. So, and this is. I haven't had you down in uh, uh, the after's alley. Uh, dungeon yet so that's that's the next time i see you we've got to do that that's the next thing for me to look forward to because so, i always enjoy you know working with you and well likewise doing... yeah. have some fries oh, of so, course I, actually let's toast some fries here literally yes sir swallow so <laughs> the first thing i want to talk to you about after i swallow here is that um you now, along with Stevie Richards, and I was so proud to see this, are actually on the alumni page of WWE.com. When you saw that for the first time, tell me what I mean, was your reaction? What a tremendous honor. Uh, yeah. You know, WWE is the global brand for sports entertainment. Yes. I say pro wrestling, but for sports entertainment. And uh, not only was it, you know, to have the privilege and honor of working for the WWE and ECW, but to uh, be remembered and inducted into your alumni section yeah. means I, m I must have did something right. Yeah, so, really, uh, really. I mean, as a performer, sometimes you have your doubts about yourself, you know. You know, you, you go, did I do the right things? Did I do it en enough, you know? And then... You know, they were kind enough. Then you see something like that. Something like that, like, and it's so mind blowing. Yeah. So so cool. It's cool. You did the you right know, thing. You know, it's very cool. So you you brought up something, um, which I've asked a lot of pro wrestlers, that when the term sports entertainment came out, some of the guys were like, "Fine, I'm a sports entertainer," and some of the guys were like a little miffed because I'm a pro wrestler. At the beginning, when it first came out, that you guys are sports entertainers what was your take on that um i i you know it's like you you could call it sports entertainment i, I like to think sports entertainment's the umbrella yeah, yeah and then underneath you have different variations of sports entertainment you know you have like pro it. wrestling yeah. baseball's entertainment i mean you know it's competitive but right right football's entertaining you know exactly. these are uh, you know, different forms well, of escapism. So they are sports entertainers as well, but yeah. they are athletically involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, wrestling is just as athletically involved as, you know, pro wrestling. So, oh, absolutely. I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely. So I think you could have the umbrella sports entertainment, like but have different little subsections of sports entertainment. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you know how back in the 90s when ECW coined the phrase, coined the phrase extreme, yeah. Extreme wrestling, yeah. and everybody else followed. WWE's been calling themselves sports entertainment, and I just saw a commercial for on TV for a local uh, cable carrier, and they could say, "Get our sports entertainment plan. Get all the Is football right? games." Yeah, Is for uh, right? Comcast. Wow. Comcast so has a commercial for their sports entertainment plan. So WWE coined the phrase. They should yeah. have trademarked it. So they've taken what Vince McMahon and the creative powers yeah. be there, and uh, everybody's using it now. However. However, there are so many pockets of uh, independent wrestling right. that still go by the pro wrestling marquee. Of course. Yeah. And yeah. you know, as they should. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a it's, you're you're a wrestler, and that's your profession, pro wrestling. So, uh, and you know, it's just 
it's it's the old school guy in me, you know. It, it, it's always pro wrestling. Of, co of course, pro wrestling, you know. And no matter how what you want, how you want to, you know, you can try to paint the horse all different kind of colors. It's still a horse. Well, well I always you know? tell people when they say, you know, that it's different. There are a lot of different elements in it. However, the product still takes place in four corners, unless exactly. TNA. But but it still ta <laughs> it still takes place in the ring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, you can try to call it everything else, but it's still like Billy Joel said. It's still rock and roll to me. It's yeah. still pro wrestling to me. Yeah. yeah you very know. Very well said. Very well said. So we've gotten a lot of mail at OneWrestling.com, and a couple of people. People at uh, Chickies and Pete's have uh, uh, asked us about this as well. Is uh, your left hand has got a cast on it, and uh, it's been all over the internet, which means yes. it's got to be true. It's yes. been all over the internet um, that you had an accident, yes. and people wanted to know. They were all going, "Oh my God, the blue mini is hurt." Tell us first of all if you wouldn't mind showing that out to the camera. There, yeah, give them 3D. Go, oh, okay. go right ahead. Well, I won't do 3D, but. That's pretty cool. That's pretty, <laughs> so what, how did, uh, now usually when somebody has something like that yeah. going on, I usually say to them, you know, you were skiing in Colorado, right? You you went to do the third somersault off the mountain. I was doing the triple Lindy, like uh, Rodney Dangerfield and back to school. And, that's uh, what it was. I hit that's the side of the pool instead right. of the water. That's what now, it I was. Now I wish I had a cool story for it. But uh, I, I I did the ultimate job to Mother Nature. Did you? You <laughs> Just, did the job of Mother yeah, Nature. Uh, Mother Nature, uh, you know, hit me with the the uh, leg sweep, and I took a bump, and the first thing that hit the ground was my hand. Uh, Where was this, by the way? Oh, I was doing errands, coming back from the bank, doing the the, the meanie errands for the day. So nothing even. Nothing dangerously even cool. meanie. No, I was I was walking. Yeah. And I was on the ground. And then uh, I popped up to my knees, grabbed my hand. During the ice storms we had here in Philly? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. It was a, a place that probably could have used some salt. And yeah. They didn't salt. And yeah. I, I took the bump. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, wow. Uh, you know, I said a couple of expletives, which I won't repeat. Yes. And, but, yes. Uh, and uh, I, I went directly to the hospital. You know, I had a friend who was there, saw the whole thing, took me to the hospital. And... Uh, two plates and 14 screws later, I am the bionic meanie. Wow. I am bringing the Cowboy Bob Orton gimmick back. Is that right? I was suggesting... <laughs> cowboy Meanie we, Orton. Well, I, I was suggesting that not just the uh, Cowboy Meanie Orton, but if you remember back in the 70s, I was hit with Stan Stasiak's heart punch. Yes. That... You want to... You know what? Let me put my hand up here and you want to... No, I don't want to disturb. <laughs> I don't want to disturb the rehab you had going let me, on. Yeah, I've been. I'm rehabbing three times a. Well, what a week. is the extent of the injury? Tell us what. Uh, uh, I what broke it is. two metal carpal bones uh, in my hand, uh, right below the uh, middle finger and the ring finger. Okay. The two metal carpals here. Right. Uh, actually, I'll just. I'll give a little demonstration. An exclusive right here at OneWrestling.com from Chicky and Pete's I'm not South Philly Packer Avenue. I'll try not to get crab fry uh, stuff on there, but uh, right here. Well, you'd need to show that closer to the camera. If you people are squeamish, yeah. okay, that's my cameraman. Do we have that, sir? Yeah, we We're good. That. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's the two metal carpal bones. That's bones that uh, fractured. My middle finger dislocated. Right. Wow. Which had to be popped in. Um, I had an operation that, that following week uh, right here in South Philadelphia. And uh, I'm rehabbing it three three days a week, and uh, they, you know, as you know, I'm a trainer at the Monster Factory, and one of our yeah, well, I, I, we're going to talk. Well, about no, this that. this relates yeah. to that. Uh, one of our current students, Matt Riddle, who was in the UFC. Yes. He had broken in his hand, and he has plates as well. And he, he fell told, on the ice as well. <laughs> no, his was he had a cool story. He was actually fighting when he oh, broke his hand. Okay. Right. But uh, he told me his. Road to recovery took about six to eight months. Just, really? Uh, I mean, the operation and then the, uh, the re rehabilitation that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a process because all the tendons, sh you know, sh shrink up, you know, sure, after sure. the surgery. So uh, I'm still in pain, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, it didn't kill me, so it'll only make me stronger. Well, the, the, 
This will help ease the pain. Oh, yeah. More of the uh, crab fries here at Chickies and Pete's. This is um, fat guy penicillin right here. Is it really? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you're not a bad guy. You're just a meanie. Yeah, it's more so to love. So you brought up uh, the Monster Factory. And yes, I sir. know, um, I, I don't know if I've told you this, and I probably have a hundred times, but I was actually at the Monster Factory in that old airplane hangar yes. when it was first opened up. And it was first opened up by the original Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers, yes. and Larry Sharp. Yes. And through the years, as you know, they trained so many greats like uh, Bam Bam, Bigelow, and who, who are some uh, of the other? Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas came King out. Kong Bundy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tatanka. So many, so yeah, many people. And current who stars up. like Seamus and uh, The Big Show. Yes. Yes. Now, how did you become associated with the Monster Factory? Uh, as you know, I tried to do a lot of different things. Yeah. You know, other than a lot of extracurricular activities mm -hmm. within the wrestling world. Right. I do acting and. Uh, I do. Uh, I have a friend, Tommy Avalone, who uh, did the McFo McFoley documentary, I Am Santa Claus. Yes, I remember that. And they wanted to interview me and they said, do you know a place with a ring? I was like, well, the Monster Factory is right across the river from Philly. So uh, 10 minute drive. Yeah, yeah, I went there, filmed my part for I Am Santa Claus there. And I just fell in love with the, the place. Yeah. Uh, Danny Cage, the new owner, who's uh, owned it since 2011. Me and him hit it off right away. That's great. And then we had a, a, a second project I filmed there with Ian, our good friend Ian Ricky Bonnie. Rick, yes, yes. Ian Ricky Bonnie from uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, he was working for Phillies Nation. Uh, he wanted to interview me about the Phillies, mm -hmm. and uh, I put him. We put him through a, a, a mock uh, tryout. You know, kind of like the Rocky tryouts yes, and stuff like course. that. Yes, of course. You have to do that. And the second time there, Danny was like, "Hey, man, you want to?" train here I said you know what absolutely why not yeah this this business has given me so much and uh, I've gotten so much from the business it's time for me to give back to the business that gave so much to me see I, I I'm gonna be honest with you sometimes I hate what the fries are coming out here but <laughs> so, sometimes I hate when wrestlers say they, they you know I I've taken so much from the business now I want to give back because a lot of them just don't mean it Right. I know you. Right. I know your heart, and I know that you mean it. You've known me since I was 16 years old. We're going to tell that story, yeah. too. That's well, in my book. Ahead, but yeah. That's in my book, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, I've always wanted this. You, you know, the uh, the sacrifices I made to be, be in this I do. business. I do. You know, and people say, "Oh, I sacrificed so much." I've I've done some sacrificing, but uh, you know, in, in the end, it it was worth it. I mean, there's you know, you know, life gives you challenges, and it's not you know how many times you get knocked down. But as Rocky says, how many times you get right back up and keep moving yeah, forward? Yeah, you know, it's how many times. Yeah, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know he does a, a Stallone, too. <laughs> well, so you're the king of impersonations. I, try, I, I can't, I'm not going to do your we, 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 we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. Yes, yeah. copyright infringement. You yes, can't sir. Do that. So, I'll give you a nickel later. So now, uh, okay, that's another story. <laughs> but And that's in the book, too. Yes. But uh, shameless plugging here. Yes. But, and the other shameless plug is, don't forget, we're coming to you from Chickies and Pete's on Packer Avenue in South Philly. Such a wonderful just, place. It really is. Yeah. And uh, where we can just hang out like this. We're just and, chilling. We're hanging yeah, out. We're yeah. having great food, great crab yeah. fries, great yes. drinks, great yeah. people. Yeah. Do you see that lady over there? She's watching you. Well, I'm not going to steal the silverware. They gave us plastic. No, okay, wear. that's not why she was watching. But any, <laughs> anyway, so now uh, you, 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 were you were a trainee. A tra you were training. You trainer. were a trainer yeah. at the Monster Factory. Now with the uh, with this real gimmick on yeah. now, what is your status with the Monster Factory? Uh, right now, Factory? all in-ring activities is, is on pause. Uh, my main priority right now is to make sure I can get back to be 100%. I don't want to, you know... Any free? I already got injured doing one freak occurrence. Yeah, yeah. I don't need another one. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've stepped away from the ring. Uh, like I said, uh, the the road to recovery is probably six to eight months. So it'll probably be a good six to eight months before I, I even consider stepping back in the ring. But I still mentor our, mentor our kids up here. Yeah, oh, of course. You know, because psychological uh, is such a large yeah. part of the business. The Monster Factory is a five-headed monster. Uh, Danny Cage, the owner. Right. Myself, former WWE ECW. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Wiles, former ECW. Outstanding amateur wrestler as well. Right. And Danny Danny Cage was an outstanding amateur wrestler as okay. well. We have uh, QT Marshall from Ring of Honor. Right. Uh, and Luis the Punisher Martinez, yes. uh, one of our other students. And uh, 
together, all five of us bring something totally different to the table. You it's know, a great, it's, it's, it's the mixture that brings yeah, everything. It, it's, it's like check fruition. mix. There's yeah. a little bit of everything yeah. in there. Yeah. Because Danny and Bill bring the amateur wrestling. Yeah. Tremendous amateur wrestling. Which, you know, that's a great base for any professional wrestler. Absolutely. When you when you build a house, you don't start with the roof. You start with the base, and the base is amateur wrestling. You haven't wrestling. seen my house, have <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, and then, uh, you know, QT Marshall's an excellent worker. Uh, and doing a lot of stuff with Ring of Honor. He's a really good, he gets in there with the students, rolls around. Yeah. Me, myself, I'd like, you know, I've been in the business 21 years now. Uh, I've done a lot of things right. I've done a lot of things right, but I've done, I've made mistakes. And if I can pass my mistakes forward and say, hey. The, the only way you, know, you can learn really yeah. is, is, really is, and I'm not gonna use the word, but when the fan you allowed, you effed up. Yeah. And you screwed up, and you got to learn from those mistakes. Yeah, I got a lot of scar tissue from uh, those mistakes. You know. How did you feel the first few times fans started chanting that at ECW? Maybe even for something you did. Fortunately, with my character, didn't happen. Did it? I, I was so goofy. Here, here's here's a story. Uh, one time, uh, Tommy Dreamer was getting laid out by Danny Doring, uh, Mike Lazanski, and a few other uh, uh, Jack Victory and a few guys. And uh, me and Nova were doing, New Jack was laid up with an injury. So uh, they had me and Nova do the New Jack entrance where we bring our, our trash can full oh, I of- I remember this. I we remember bring this. our trash can full yeah. of plunder. Yeah. And you know how New Jack launches it into the ring. He goes in, starts hitting people with the weapons. So Nova goes to launch the trash can over the top rope. I try to shove it through the ropes and we both hit the top rope. So all the weapons start falling to the ground. And you know, we start, Throwing in, I run in with a crutch and start doing it. New Jack, who was up on the stage, fell out of his chair laughing with a serious groin injury. My, no, my, mind you, he said, Meanie, you're the only person who can make a mistake like that. And they think, Oh, that's just Meanie being Meanie. They, you know, because we were the comedy act, so you know, even if I flubbed or you know, botched something, it was, it, it was stick yeah. to the fans, yeah, so it went over. Yeah. It was a botchamania moment, so definitely, uh. I could get away with it, you know, because yeah. they thought I meant it. Yeah. You know, which, which was such a luxury I had. That's great. But, Let's, yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go. But, uh, you know, I was fortunate to ha not have those chances. So. Yes. That ECW, we'll, we'll talk about this on another occasion, but it changed the makeup of the fan yeah. completely. It really did. I, I want to rewind. I know that. I want to rewind, though. Where can people find out more about the Monster Factory? Uh, Monsterfactory.org. Uh, depending on when this airs, we have a three-day seminar coming up, uh, May 1st through 3rd. Okay. Uh, That's 2015. If you're watching this, Afterwards, it was still go to Monster, of, go to would, MonsterFactory.org. We have yeah. seminars all the time. But it was a hell of a seminar, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, it was yeah, great. It was great. You should have seen you it. You should have been there. You missed it. You should have been but, there. Yeah. yeah, you have to be at the Monster Factory because it's so good. We have amateur. We're part of the Paulsboro Amateur Wrestling Club. So one side's all amateur mats, one side's a ring, and we have a full weight room. You know, you brought up something yeah. that I wasn't even gonna, I wasn't even thinking of mentioning. You're talking about Paulsboro, New Jersey. Yeah. So the very first VHS tape on pro wrestling ever, what was it? Lords I mean, of the Ring. Right. With you and Gordon Soli. Gordon Soli and I hosted yeah. it. Yeah. It was taped in a studio in Paulsboro. That's amazing. And the person whose baby this was was the big political force in Paulsboro, John Berzicelli. Oh, okay. Yeah, did yeah. you know that? I did not know that Yes. Yeah. I didn't know where it was filmed, but... It was I, filmed there, and it was John Berzicelli. If you don't know who John Berzicelli is, Google right now. Yes. You'll find out. Yes, yes. Uh, you'll find out who he, he and uh, Craig Peters from PWI produced it, along with Jeff Otto yeah. and uh, and Gordon Soley. But again, we'll do, these are things for another, uh, another time here at... Well, we we have m many wonderful stories. Before we wrap up, Yes. And we talked about that, and uh, uh, we talked about the Monster Factory. Yes. I want to talk about you and me. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the uh, again, shameless plug for my book that comes out in October, and I'll ask you the question, is wrestling fixed? Well, I, I didn't even know it was broke. You didn't know it was broke. <laughs> That's the title of the book. My but, hands broke, but I didn't know wrestling was broke. There's a chapter yeah. in there, and I don't know if I should give away this. I'm not going to give the whole story. No, no, no. It's too, it's a good read. He and I met 
uh, and and for years his name to me became the ice cream boy. So I, I, let's not tell him the story. Right, right. It, it, buy the book. It's it's in the book. And, buy and, the and book or or rent the book or yeah. whatever. But it, it's a Wherever really those crazy kids do these days. Yeah, but it's a really really good book. Um, before, and, and, well, and going back I to think the, it is. I think it is. The one part I can go to is when I, I met you. I was sixteen. Yeah. Fifteen or sixteen. And I said, I want to be a pro wrestler. And you're like, well, I know the school, the Monster Factory. I did tell you that. Yeah. That's correct. And you said, uh, anytime you want to, when you think you're ready to go. Well, wait, wait. I told up. you about the Monster Factory, and I told you about the Wild Samoans training camp. Yeah. But you said you couldn't get to Allentown. Yeah. It was too far from you. Yeah, eventually yeah. that you called me and you told me about, you know, they were having tryouts. And I went. To, I had to try out the Monster Factory the day after WrestleMania, whichever WrestleMania was in the Hoosier Dome. Yeah. The next day, I drove and had my tryout in front of Larry uh, Sharp, Dennis Coraluzzo, and Headbanger Thrasher. Dennis and, Coraluzzo, boy, what a character he was. I, let me say this. Dennis Coraluzzo was a gem. Uh, I, he was your old school promoter. He was such a great character. He was a wonderful husband. And he loved his iced tea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah. Hey, dude. Uh, I can't pay you that much. Hey, here's 30 bucks. I might be able to use you again. You know. I love characters. Hey, I love characters, and he was an incredible character. Yeah. Here's a great Dennis Corlozzo story. Because Dennis, I mean, I love Dennis. He is very polarizing, though. But uh, the, the, the awesome time, uh, one time, me, Dennis Corlozzo, Dan Severn, through late great Phil Slee, who we both love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're walking down South Street in Philadelphia, and uh, a homeless guy comes up to Dennis. He goes, uh, "Excuse me, sir, do you have, have any money?" He's like, "Are you hungry?" The guy said, "Yes, I'm very hungry." And he took the guy into a McDonald's and ordered him whatever he wanted and gave him that food. You know what? Yeah. I really enjoyed the meal. Yeah. <laughs> it's come full circle. Ladies. You haven't aged a bit. Really. You smell better though. Have a steak for Yeah, us. yeah, yeah. So I want to thank you for being the uh, the first guest here on the Chicky and Pete's Afters Alley Annex, South Philly, Packer Avenue. When you, whether you're coming to see a game or not, that's not important. The important thing is, this is the place to be. The home of the uh, the crab fries and the yeah. uh, great atmosphere. Yeah. So as we always do, as we wrap up Afters Alley, we put our hand to the camera and we'll see. I thought he'd never leave. Thought he'd never shut up either. Oh, is this thing on? Maybe he'll put this in there. April 28th, the Blue Meanie, Stevie Richards, Joey Styles, ECWA's unreleased volume three coming out courtesy of the WWE. Watch all the great ECW action hosted by the Blue Guy, Big Stevie Cool, and oh my God! Joey Styles comes out April 28th. If uh, I thought he came back, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. What? what? Oh, well, oh, hey, hi, Bill. Hey. I think the camera's still on. Oh, I, I was just uh, oh, okay. checking my you can, you can my face it. paint. You can it. It's okay. You can no, no, no. Oh, uh, teascom slash Blue Mini. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get all your T-shirts. And... Actually, what, what what site was that? Pro Wrestling. Tees.com slash Blue Meanie. Isn't there like a new Afters Alley shirt on there too? You are correct. My uh, my Yoda. You are my Yoda. So, yeah, you, you are correct. You have your own After Alley t-shirt line. Wow. As well as the... Our cameraman's getting undressed. Be glad the camera's on us. We'll see you at the matches. <laughs>